All right, uh, let's see. Build succeeded. Did my test run? Yeah, that's not really relevant. Okay, let me let me kick those again. It only takes 0 0.06 seconds, right? Okay. So so that's good. I can. Did I check that in? Yes. Okay. Um, right now let's do some refactoring so this can i rename that i think argument context is probably a better and context is sort of a word for symbol table at least in some circles um at least in this sort of interpreter scope lambda context So outer context, inner context, we evaluate the argument in its own context. We build up the context for the Lambda expression itself, and then we evaluate the expression. Okay, now this, this can go, of course, whoops. I wanna do basically an inline, so, um, the call, the one call is function call of that. So I want to put this instead, and we're going to have to make sure the the arguments line up. But okay, if it's um, let's see, function call. My my hope the new way is result equals lambda dot apply, where lambda is function dot lambda. The argument is arguments.first. The context is context. And symbol table is lambda.symbol table. Uh, sorry, closure, which is function.symbol table. Okay, let's take this out. Let's do that. Now, at, at some level, this this closure maybe is not pulling its weight. I don't I don't know, but we'll do we'll finish our refactoring first. Okay, so now there should be nobody referencing this, and I'll just check real quick. Okay, so that can be deleted. Whoops. Whatever I did, don't do that. Okay. Primitive. Do I have two copies running? I do. Oh. Let's keep this one. I don't even know how you close that. Oh, it's two of these contexts. Okay. Um, all right, we're in closure, so we'll delete that. Okay. See what little closure is doing? It knows it's a closure and it wraps the lambda with the with the value. I don't know, not much behavior there, but okay. Uh, let's <laughs> one thing at a time. Okay, so now we um, move um, inline apply from closure to function call. Okay, so the function call kind of knows what he's got. Eh, it's the the deal is if I could get all this stuff out of the the closure, we'll have to look more deeply. I'm not sure I want to do that at this very moment. But you know, really, this thing I don't think this is being referenced. Oh no, it is. Function dot name function dot lambda. Exp 
depression. Function dot lambda, function dot symbol table. That's the top level things. Who references name and expression? I think that was, um, yeah, that's name. That's now coming off of lambda dot name, lambda dot expression. So the closure doesn't need these things either. All right, so let's delete or refactor, remove unused fields in closure. All right, so back here, pull apply from closure to lambda expression. I think we've done that. So let's take this. Story is operators, pull apply over. Okay, now we had this thing about curry function currently in interpreter. I think we moved that to primitive. It may be in interpreter still. No, okay, we did that one. I guess that's over here. We did it last week. Move to primitive. Okay. That's good. Okay, subclass of lambda expression. All right, now we're getting back to what we did before. Hmm. Okay, so that that probably is our test we had. Okay, I gotta close this one. Let's look over here. That's fine, but we had a test. Okay, yeah, we wanted to write this test. Maybe we can write it now. <laughs> okay, so a function is here's primitive dot curry. We're gonna take primitive functions convert to plus plus. Okay, primitive functions. Well, convert to, okay, that's that's fine. That's the plus, uh, the first plus is the integer plus and then the real plus, which we haven't really, well, yeah, we worked this through. So if you've got an argument of two functions, um, you, you need an argument of two functions, int and int goes to int, or double, double goes to double. We're going to turn it back into our expression land, a function from two arguments to one argument. Okay, and we will worry about whether this function basically converts it to worry about should it be a float or an int or what. So if they're both integer values, then we use the int function. If one of them is an int value and the other is a float, we convert. And then if they're both floats, then we use the double function. Okay, so that seems good and test wise. All right, so we're assuming primitive.curry um, does its job. Okay, function two equals function one of integer three. Okay. Yeah, I, I think we can see how we're doing here okay cannot call value of function type expression okay so primitive functions when you call it we get a function back at two expressions to one <coughs> excuse me all right now this is a function. Well, function one is two arguments to one. I 
I'm lost. Are we testing convert to or are we testing something else? Oh, wait, we're calling convert curry. Okay, uh, I left out a step. <laughs> okay, so we have this. Now this thing produces a function from expression, cross expression goes to expression, or expression, comma, expression goes to expression. We apply our curry to it. Curry takes a function of expression, expression goes to expression, and produces an expression. Now, all right, so our test it's so annoying this has got to be a bug in Xcode <laughs> it says primitive test.swift and this is primitive up oh, there it was okay so here's primitive test okay so we curry it we get a we get an expression back, right? We're just getting one expression. Our hope is, I mean, the implicit type is expression goes to expression goes to expression. <laughs> okay. Um, and that you can see that mirroring expression, expression, expression. So we have the function of two arguments. You know, we turn it into a function of one argument by assuming the x exists, and then uh, you know, so it 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 flips it around. I mean, this is this is what we want, but the evaluation leaves something to be desired. So I don't have I don't have an apply. I mean, this is kind of what I want it to be like. You pass this function one value, you get back another function and evaluate that one and you get the result you want. That definitely would tell me that currying was doing its job. Um, but I can only do this if, if function one, hmm. like what does it have to be? It's got to be, a lambda expression or a closure or some <laughs> all right um cannot count value of non-function with expression okay because we want to evaluate this function so we're kind of back in that um well we're kind of back where we were here's primitive let's get Lambda, oh, yeah, lambda expression. I mean, we're we're trying to do apply. I mean, I think I'm getting a primitive back, right? And that's that's what we are getting. Okay, so let's make our test reflect that or know that um as primitive okay and that's sort of an implicit thing i don't know what the problem is cast from unrelated type to primitive okay so we'll turn it into a lambda expression okay that should get happier. Okay. Now, what can you do with primitive? Well, primitive. I want to say if you apply, let's go back to lambda. If you call apply on a on a primitive. Well, let's let's duplicate this. So that's clearly a refactoring. Okay. 
if I call apply, you gave me an argument, its context, you gave me a symbol table for me to use. I should be able to call something. Okay, let's go back to our test. <laughs> Getting a test right is a tough thing sometimes. Okay, that's those. That's, I don't think I need that. This is the one we're focused on. Okay, so I get a primitive. If I call uh, function one dot apply and I have to pass um, I have to pass three things. I got to pass the argument, which is integer value three. I have to pass the argument context, which doesn't matter. X, uh, sorry, empty. We can use an empty, empty context for the argument because the argument is already an ex a primitive expression, primitive number. Okay, and then I don't think I care about this symbol table, so let's just pass another one. Okay, I may I may regret it. <laughs> okay, um, I should get function two equals. I think I should be able to do that. Okay, now function two equals function one of integer value three. Okay, I think I just replaced that. I say function one is a primitive. So call apply on it, give it an argument three, an empty symbol table to evaluate the argument because we don't care, and then an empty symbol table for the lambda because I don't think we care. And that gives us a result that it doesn't like. Primitive has no member apply. Well, it hasn't caught on yet. Oh, I just tried to run tests. Yeah, okay, that's okay. It probably woke up, yeah, woke up and realized it didn't have a symbol table now, or didn't have a, uh, it does have an apply. Okay, now the, the function two, that thing is also a primitive. That's definitely what we're expecting. And then when you have function two as a primitive, we should be able to say function two dot apply. Integer value four, we'll just use empty symbol tables like that okay so we're, we're trying to bounce back and forth between um, the interpreter domain like integer value 3 and the Swift domain where these primitives are going to be defined and we got this curry function that's that's going to do the, the the work it's a little much I mean even just trying to read it as a test it's like yeah that's a pretty brutal test create, let's see, create an operator, a two argument operator that works on Swift values, convert it to a two argument operator that works on interpreter values, then curry it to turn it into a one argument function, producing a one argument function that produces a value. Okay, so we're gonna peel off the, apply the functions, um, we got the first one, we'll apply it. That gives us a new function. We know it's a primitive and well, we, we will make it a primitive and then we're going to apply that function. So the three plus Y function gets applied to integer value four and hopefully the result is seven. All right. I believe this will fail. <laughs> hopefully for the right reasons. I'm expecting to get back a lambda expression instead of a primitive and have it fail like at line six. Yeah. Okay. What's the complaint? Abort. Okay. I guess it didn't like converting that. All right. And uh, it's a good time for a break. So we'll take two minutes, come back, and uh, hopefully fix this relatively easily. But it, we'll fix it one way or the other. All right, welcome back. Uh, let's see. So we came in here. We had this failing test function one. 
failed to be a primitive. Uh, sorry. Yeah. I failed to be a primitive. It is in fact a Lambda expression. And, um, the only reason it's a Lambda expression is because in primitive, no, in, yeah, in Curry here, we just returned a Lambda expression. We didn't worry about it. Okay, so now we're going to try and do the real thing. Um, and this code came from our spike. Oh, no. Cannot evaluate value of type expression goes to expression to converted argument type string. Hmm. What does a primitive take? Oh, okay. Hmm. Let's find lambda. It's over here. Name and expression. Hmm. Oh, this is going to get harder than I think. Um, all right. So when we initialize super, All right, so we needed a init of primitive. What is primitive getting? Well, it gets a function of one argument. I guess this is in Swift terms. It gets an expression. X is of type expression. And it returns an expression, I guess. Um, this is the... Um, operation of type expression goes to expression, right? We have to call super init uh, with a name. Yeah, this is, this is not, okay, this is why. <laughs> It isn't quite a lambda. Does it care? It gets this apply, but I don't think apply is going to be the same. So maybe it's just an expression. Uh, we'll have to see. Okay, we're going to try and get through to the green bar. But I'm initializing this stuff for lambda. I don't care about it at all. X, X, whatever my apply has nothing to do with it. It's going to be, it's going to be evaluating stuff in the real context. Okay. So a curry function takes an argument of one value, which is an expression. And passes it in to a function of some value. Okay, they're all working in that expression domain, so up, up at the right domain. This, we need to capture our operator. Um, ooh, op of type expression goes to expression. Okay. And self dot up. 
What? Oh, operation. Op equals operation. Okay. Uh, where's the escaping go? In front of the function. Okay. <laughs> All right. So now we're creating a primitive. We pass in the stuff in brackets, which is a function of one variable producing an expression. We store that here. And OK, we'll see if we're making progress. I think at least one fewer complaint will come. We're still returning the wrong. Oh, we got the first one through. OK, this is progress, definitely. So now it accepted the first one, gave it a primitive back. But when we go to apply it, it doesn't do the right thing. So let's let's go back into apply. Uh, sorry, we want primitive. OK, so here apply. We've got the argument. Oh, should the argument have already been evaluated? Well, let's see. So you're applying a primitive. We're trying to apply the op, like somewhere. <laughs> we have this operation that takes one argument in. Well, the argument it takes better be our argument. Um, that's the core of what we're trying to get at. Okay, something like that is going to happen somewhere along the way. Um, the result of the call. Okay, let's let's call it result for now. His type should be expression. Uh, his type is expression. Okay, so. I don't think we need any of this context stuff. Uh, we don't need the Lambda context. And we do need the argument context. But I don't think we need these things. Inner context dot add name. Yeah, that's to get the, the name injected in, but we're using the position of this of this thing. Okay, so if you're going to evaluate a primitive, you evaluate the argument and pass that in and you get something back. And I don't think these come into it. OK, nobody's complaining. Yeah. OK. Um, and now we want to return. Well, I think we just want to return this this. Okay, well, <laughs> is it this simple? Um, it's good when it clicks together and it's simple. So we're saying, if you've got a primitive, evaluate its argument, however you do that, and then apply the function, the operation, and I think maybe, maybe I'll keep the long out spelling. Operation. Okay, operation is a swift level function on expressions. So we'll apply that. It'll give us back an expression and we should be good. Okay, so let's see how we're doing. <laughs> hey, it passed. Okay, so what do we got passing here? If you take the plus function, the convert to one, you wrap it up so it can do ints or doubles, you curry it so it takes one argument at a time, and then you apply the, the function twice, then you've got the real value. Okay, so woohoo, this is this is good. And I think, uh, like I said, when it snaps in like this, you go, okay, we're on to something because it's supposed to be easy. <laughs> Um, now I don't, I don't think, 
All right, let's let's check that in. That's progress. Um, make curry. I'll say primitive dot curry work. All right. Now, where I feel like our parent is not giving us anything. Um, Lambda expression, we don't use name and we don't use expression. So like, hey, that was a waste. It's not really one of those things. It really is. Well, it's a function of some sort. Yeah, I'll grant you that. Let's see what we can do. Um, primitive. Okay, it's init operation should look more like this. We don't know the argument, we don't know the expression. Let's just use elm type dot unknown for now. Okay, if I make this thing just an expression. I don't need this. I'm not an override. Oh, so that's a problem. Well, maybe I'm Hmm, am I a f uh, I don't know. Am I going bad here? Let's let's diff this. <laughs> Land expression. Okay. I'm a little bit off. Let's let's revert. Close that. Okay. Um, discard changes. Okay. So the the problem I have is the person calling apply is this functional call function call, and he knows. Oh, how is this gonna work? Yeah, if I say it's a lambda, it's fine. Where, what I was thinking was maybe what if I had a functional functional expression kind of thing that lambdas and primitives both said they conform to, and then the closure could hold that functional expression and doesn't have to care that that what it's doing with it. Um, that's my easy way out. I don't know if there's a way to make this thing less snoopy. I mean, right now, closures only know about lambdas, and that's that's the way it's gonna be. Maybe maybe I need to be testing something else. Um. Yeah, this thing really just becomes a kind of a data bag type thing. It's just got a couple fields, nothing else going on. Equality test is probably just for tests, as string is not really being meaningful yet. Um, hmm. Like, do I, any free insight? <laughs> Okay, uh, so that's definitely one way to do it is is make make the apparent type functional expression that lambda expression and and primitive expression both both do, and then the closure code acts the same. The function call will will change this to functional maybe. 
Um, maybe I shouldn't have inlined that, but we'll change that to functional. But he applies arguments in the symbol table. Um, it's conceivable we would need the symbol table at some point, I guess. But I don't know. What else can we do? I guess another thing we could do is give everybody an apply, but I don't I don't think everybody it only makes sense for functions. All right, let's let's try that. Let's make a functional expression. I'll just stick it here for the moment. Class functional expression. Maybe it's just functional. Ugh. Is an expression. Okay, and a functional. certainly has this and defines that. Well, I guess it needs everything, right? Um, we'll work on what the uh, this thing means. I think it's just going to be super.eq. Let's try that. Until we have our own fields, there's nothing to compare. Okay, um, as string, let's let's say functional. I, uh, this is more debugging than anything at this point. Okay, evaluate closure context self okay so closures need to take functionals that's fine and then apply um, we're going to give a dummy implementation return um, we had an error expression and I think it's kind of a cannot happen for now we're just trying to inject this parent class. Okay, so I'm I'm pulling up all the code from here into the parent so that we can make lambda expression be a functional ex functional. Okay. And do we have override, override, override? Okay. Um, and this is an override. Okay, I think I think that will be okay if we make closure take a functional instead of a symbol table. Okay, lambda is a functional. Yes. All right, we'll leave the name for a moment. I want to get everything working first. Okay, so this is, this refactoring is kind of a pull up refactoring. We've given a parent class to an object. We still don't have one on our primitives, though. And we would like them to not be a lambda expression, but be a functional. OK. Now, um, our init. Well, we basically need to init 
some sort of type. Lost it there. Okay, super init. Well, I think we can skip that. Okay, we got to call it. He's not taking any arguments. That seems a little wrong. He's got to pass. Yeah, he's got to pass that function. So just like Lambda expression, we're going to take this. Oh, where was that unknown unknown I did? <laughs> That's the one we want. Okay. Now that thing's going to have to pass its type up. I think it implicitly does that as sort of like the free initialization. If you don't define the constructor, it just assumes that you want the same one the parent had and uses that. Okay. So, all right. How are we doing? We got, we said we're a functional. We initialize a little differently and then we do our stuff. Let's see if we pass the test. Nice. Okay. So, um, well, okay. We did all that so that we can get the eval on fun the apply on function call function dot lambda dot apply the closure. Yeah, I think I think it really was premature to pull this method over the apply method. So let's let's go back to closure. I'm going to I'm going to pull the method back over. So uh lambda expression, sorry, function call Okay, so we had function apply um And its first argument is the same as these. I guess that's all the same. Oh, where'd I go? Closure. Okay, let's do that. It's not an override. That's okay. We don't need the lambda context because that's something we already know. All right. And then this is lambda that. So we got two applies. One has two arguments, one has three arguments. This is argument context. Okay, so we're saying um, this is argument. So pass the argument, which will be arguments.first, the context, and function call, we're passing arguments.first and the context. Okay, and closure, and that's extra. Okay. Cannot find function, that's just us. So this is just symbol table. We're accessing lambda and symbol table from our own fields. Okay, so we got the argument, the context, we apply the functional there. Okay, now here, <laughs> I'm just gonna call function.apply 
and arguments.first context, but then function.symbol table, that's function's job. So rather than go in and grab the lambda, go in and grab the symbol table, I'm saying closure should know all that stuff and closure owns it. Okay, so this should pass. I'm really gonna have to bring up app code for for some some of these projects. Uh, I know it has a lot more built-in stuff. I don't know if I have to pay for it or if there's a community edition. All right, so we did a refactor. Um, pull apply back from function call to closure. Okay. Oh. <laughs> the stress. Okay, now how are we looking on closure land? Okay, so what we have these primitive functions. We said there is a lookup that will you give it a prefix operator and it gives you back a convert to basically it gives you back a function of this type two argument function now you can curry it and maybe curry does it belong on primitive i don't know i could almost see it living over there on primitive functions Where does it get called? Well, that's a good question. Callers. Caller. Oh, is our test. Yeah, I, I think that indicates, I mean, the only usages are in that primitive functions function. So let's move this function. Um, I'm just going to do it like that <laughs> I'm going to define this one here curry and somewhere else so who, where was the test here we go curry where's primitive functions test okay Test curry turns two argument function into one argument function. Okay, and that. Let's see if anybody needs access, and I think we're okay. All right. Uh, whoops, something's wrong. Primitive has no. Mo oh, yeah, okay. Primitive. Functions. These static methods. All right. Um, so move um, curry from primitive to primitive functions. An eye there somewhere. Okay. Now primitive functions. Um, let's see how are we doing on this primitive subclass of lambda expression. Um, no, we what we did was make functional the new parent class of both primitive and lambda expression. Okay, and I think we've done that. Okay, now we're getting there. Handle prefix operators as a function call. Okay, let's let's close down some stuff. Okay, so we want to go back and we're going to track our way from the parsing 
beyond and see how we do it. I know we put some stuff in on primitive functions. I know we'll need them. Um, let's get this thing going. So, I mean, at some point we want to call this table. I don't think anything's referencing that. Whoops. Uh, callers, none. Okay, yeah, we sort of wrote that down just to remind ourselves more than anything. I don't even think it's correct. I think they should be wrapped in, in curry. Um, but that's okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, parser. I think, yeah, we're on parenthesized expressions. We somewhere did these prefix tokens, right? <laughs> oh, that'd be Lexer. Yeah, they're left parenthesis operators return a prefix operator. Okay, and with its token. Good. All right. And so the Lexer, we got to see if anybody looks for these. And that should be happening where our function calls are happening. So let's look at our parser. Find prefix operator. Get next token return variable of name. And an expression. Okay. I think this is actually incorrect. I I think we need we need these to go become our primitives or they need to be looked up that's not terrible in a way so we're saying that the prefix parenthesis plus parenthesis is a variable and when you go to evaluate a variable as a function um Let's find our interpreter for variable. What do you do? Well, you evaluate, you look it up in the context and then evaluate it in that context. Okay, so I think if we were to have the right symbol table with, with a pointer to these primitive functions, then we would have that implemented already. Okay, um, so I don't, I'll, I'll just put some text here. So what we're saying is when you see plus like that in, in the string domain, token domain, it turns into token dot prefix operator. Okay, um, with the string version so it knows the name. And then the parser is saying that's a variable. Okay, and it's the variable parens plus parens. Seems a little strange to let a variable be a, a weird string of operators, but that's okay. Oh, sorry. Um, that's fine. And then how do you evaluate a, va a variable? Well, you, you look up the plus operator. And we want that to give you back. We hope it gives you back a primitive. And somehow wrapping plus comma plus. Okay. So that's where we're headed. And the way we're going to tell, I guess. Um, I guess if I had parenthesis, if I did this. Four, okay, or four two. Um, I want that to end up with six, and that is a variable. Well, I don't know if I should do it through the parser or through the through the primitives. Let's find that parser again. <laughs> parser. 
Well, when, when I do a, an expression, that's part of expressions, which comes up to, it should turn into a function call. Okay, so maybe we can maybe we can do a test with a function call level. If you had a function call where the left hand side well I don't like that name very much now, but um where the f basically this should be expressions, I think. The expressions I can't use the name expressions because it's already a function name. So I think if you if you made a function call with the variable plus and two arguments and call it, we should find out what we want. Okay, so where are we gonna do that? I guess we're testing. We're kind of testing function call. Yeah. Okay, and function call tests. So I guess the test is if you call a function with a prefix operator, does it do the right thing? Okay, so this is a call with prefix operator should apply it. Okay, and we're going to let um, function is a function call with a list of expressions. So first expression is variable parenthesis plus parenthesis. And the second expression is integer value three or four and integer value two okay i think that's our starting point we want to evaluate that um, function dot evaluate in a context of a symbol table and let's let symbol table Hmm, what can we do with symbol tables? <sighs> I'd like to think I could add to it. Okay, I can add a string and an expression. Oh, what are you writing, Java? Okay, add. And I'm gonna add my function now, plus and primitive functions dot prefix primitives sub plus okay so I'm saying look look that thing up can it convert expression expression to argument type expression okay I think I'm on track and evaluate it That's the first expression. Okay. Okay, we're trying to prove six plus two is six. <laughs> okay. Now this is wrong because right now we have a single expression argument it we expect in our primitives or expect expect here um okay so uh that won't compile i think it's time for a break let's take two minutes we'll come back make this thing compile wrap those things with a curry function and hope evaluate works 
All right, see you in two minutes. Hi, welcome back. All right, so we've got this uh, calculation pretty close to going. You're going to create a function call, pass it the variable parenthesis prefix operator plus four and two. We'll make a new symbol table with the plus and the primitive operation for it in there. And then when we call evaluate, it should look up this variable, get the primitive function from the symbol table, and then uh, uh, apply it. Oh, we need to pass. Oh, no, the function's got the arguments. So it, it should take the two arguments, pass them to the to the function, and call and result in integer value 6. Actually, it's a two-step thing because of the currying, remember. Now this prefix operator primitives, we can only add a symbol table, we can only add a function, um, an expression. Okay, so let's go to the primitives, primitive functions. This class convert to produces, it produces an expression, expression goes to expression. That's not acceptable. We need an expression. And really, we can't have two argument functions. There's no such thing down at the bottom level. So we're going to convert this to a one argument function by currying it. Okay, and let's let's do that for all these. And parent. Parent. Okay. And now the this thing produces expressions that really have the type expression goes to expression goes to expression. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I think we'll leave that comment. We maybe should improve on it. <laughs> but I think this now, our type here, let's see, is string goes to expression. Before it was string goes to, well, let me put them, pull them back. Okay, now the type, when we started it was string goes to expression, expression goes to expression. So, um, let's get this converted again. Okay, now run the test. <laughs> it may have other problems, mind you. Uh, expression optional. Um, I think we know there's a function there, so we'll do this. We're setting up the symbol table, so I believe that's all right. Now, the, the problem we still have is the real symbol table. Oh, oh, oh. a non-function cannot be called. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Even if this all worked, we don't have a symbol table that has these operators in it. So we need to we need to do more work to set up the initial symbol table. But but for now, we're still back in cannot be called land. OK, I think we want to break on evaluate. Not function cannot be called is coming from here, right? Um, OK, so we'll break here. We'll just run the one test uh, there. Yeah, expressions everywhere. OK. We're in function call evaluate. I'll take this brief point out. All right, so we're going to want to, I guess, check here and then here. All right, so I'll continue. All right, what's result? Result is a closure. It's got a symbol table. A lambda, which is a functional. Well, partial apply forwarder tells me nothing. Okay, can I print my result? So I expect this to be a primitive at this point. So it took parenthesis, variable parenthesis plus 
parenthesis. It should have looked it up in the symbol table that we passed in to here, line 30, and found the primitive operation, the curried plus. Okay, primitive curry. Um, well, okay, here we see our keys plus, and the result is a partial forwarder <laughs> curry expression. Yeah, I think I think that's telling us we're okay. What's what's the real thing? He's a closure with a function unknown to unknown. Yes, we know that cuz we we kind of left it there. Um result is a closure. The arguments R, it should be integer two, three. Well, let's print arguments. Hopefully it prints a little nicer. It's three values, I guess the function, the four and the two. Okay. I will step over. Okay. Now function is a closure that should print a little nicer. Lambda, we still got this curry thing. Okay, it's a closure with an expression. Okay, and let's print arguments dot first. Okay, well there we see type number value four. Okay, so we we are hoping function is our curried thing and our first argument is four, so we're hoping that's all right. Let's, uh, let's see, step in. We're hoping to get to function.apply. Oh, I did not. <laughs> okay, well, what's result? He's an operation, so he's a primitive. And let's step over arguments. This should be our two, yeah. Okay, now we go back around. I'm gonna continue back here result is not closure result is operator primitive <laughs> mm. Should this thing be producing a closure somewhere? Oh, this is where I'm so not sure. <laughs> um, so if, if you can see the issue, we, we evaluated the first one. We got a closure for primitive plus primitive. I don't recall exactly how we got it wrapped up to a closure, but we did. Then when we evaluate it, now we've, we've called it with its inner argument and it's the primitive and that that's not that's not what we're expecting here we're expecting another closure if it's still a function um which tells me well which makes me wonder if our apply function for primitive functions Oh, uh, sorry, primitive. Our apply function returns the evaluate. I wonder if it should be deciding to return a closure or not. Or if our other thing should just not care about closure and then we'd be out of this. Let's find lambda. I don't have it up. 
we're going to compare, sorry, lambda expression. We want to compare how does lambda evaluate apply versus how does closure. Oh yeah, there's evaluate. We don't do that for native calls for primitive. Where's the parent? Evaluate does do that. So if we applied Okay, so when you finish your function call, probably be better off getting these in one place, but okay, so when you call function evaluate, if it's a lambda, well, okay, even here it evaluates with the context. Maybe our apply of our primitive should result in a closure. I mean, if the type is primitive, maybe it should wrap in a closure. I don't know. That I can live without. That I can live without. Okay, a lambda when you apply. Oh, he does call evaluate. So what I'm thinking is to make this pass, if we evaluate this operation, Now the thing is, if, if this thing returns an integer value and we do, what if we do evaluate on that? Returns itself. Okay, so maybe that's all right. Primitive test. Okay, so I think I'm saying evaluate in lambda context. Now I don't I don't know. I don't know if I'm throwing things at it. Curry. Oh, yeah, now he's no longer a primitive. All right, let's get back to the test we were worried about. Function call test. Okay. 
This one seems to be passing now. Okay, now the one that's not passing. <laughs> So when you apply integer value three, it's like, do, do we care that it's a primitive? Maybe I should be doing evaluate. Hard to know right if I'm wrong here. I mean, Curry definitely gives us back a primitive. And applying it is going to get that. But now the type is ex something else. Function one. We can't tell. Well, we, we pre we're pretty sure it's closure. I mean, if assuming that's what what apply does, which is kind of what we're saying we're changing to, then I want to say result equals function to dot lambda dot apply I'm taking the closure taking the lambda out of it and applying it to the values um, Function two dot lambda dot apply with that stuff is function two dot apply, I think. Yeah, with no third argument. All right, now let's try that. Uh, should I just run one test? <laughs> okay. Um, oh, dear. Yeah, let's let's focus here. So the bottom line to me here is if you do a function call with a variable integer integer, it looks up the variable, gets the function, and does the right thing. That's the fundamental thing we're after. That's happening. It's happening with the currying, it's happening with the closures and everything together. With the, the right way or the best way, that's probably, well, it's probably no, but um, it's it's uh, it's the dancing bear at this point, right? You, it's amazing to get it dancing at all, um, but I think that's okay. Now, I think what we'll find, let's let's go, well, let's, let's push this. Okay, so um, we made it so that, um, using a prefix operator looks it up and treats it as a function call to a primitive. And that's, that's really good. I mean, that's, that's definitely something, the, the combination of that, that currying and, uh, let's go, let's go in here. So wrapping the operator so that it takes the it handles the type mix match that i mean basically handles elms type rules for conversions then wrapping it up in a function that returns a function that gives us the currying and uh and you know so we can just pass one argument and all that we're kind of okay with it um if we run it now i think what we're going to find is we don't have that plus prefix plus in our symbol table yet I don't remember adding it and we just changed it. So it's pretty likely it's not there, but we should be able to say this plus three, four is seven. 
Okay, non-function cannot be called. Th that message, whew, that could be better. Um, you know, maybe don't know how to treat this as a function or something like that. But let's go see. Okay, now we're getting back into the REPL world. I'm going to close. Okay, handle prefix operators as function call. Yes, I think we've done that. Okay. Okay. I'll just say as a function call. All right. That's good. Now um, let's make REPL work with prefix operators. Okay. Um, run. We saw it fail in the in the REPL, so I don't have to do that again. Okay, where's the REPL? Let's just close this whole thing. Close others, and we'll take interpreter. Okay. Right, yeah, so right here we can see it. We've got a symbol table. We start off with an empty symbol table. You might add variables to it, but yeah, it's kind of empty. It doesn't have the, the previous stuff. Okay, so I think what we want to establish, it's like we want, we want the system predefined functions. And we want those in the symbol table to start with. I don't know if we need them at a different level, but for now, we'll put them in one level and see how it goes. <laughs> okay, so symbol table. Well, we have this one, and then we have our primitive functions. Okay. Um, evaluate input string and print. Okay, so I think that's what our test needs to do then. Um, interpreter tests, okay. So we want to test um, interpreter has predefined operators, uh, prefix operators. Maybe I can switch that around. Has prefix operators predefined, okay. And so if I say, um, well, can I do this? Yeah, I think I can. Check interpreter succeeds. The input is plus one, two. All right, take care, Code Wrangler. input one plus one two and the expected value is three okay well let's make some variety 10 12. all right this we expect to fail because there's no plus operator yet and we'll get that message function cannot call something okay non-function cannot be called all right um Let's deal with this. I guess I'm going to say initializing it should go do it for now. Init. All right. And it's going to know primitive functions dot prefix operators. Um, and What's the, is there a map? Or dot, there's something to just iterate over key values. Is it enumerated? dot uh, 
Okay, I'll look it up. <laughs> say dictionary here oh just a simple for loop would do it okay is it for each or something too though yeah that's what I want dictionary for each key value okay for each Key value in that. Okay. And so what we want to do is symbol table dot add key value. Add table string to expression. String something dict for each do array um, well I guess we can do it the other way for each that any is that satisfactory no oh just four somebody did something like that up there for this this and that yeah okay Hey, all right. Let's just run that. Seventy of type number. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, that gives us a place to attach these things. Um, cool. It. It might be nice to do something with symbol table itself. Yeah, we got we got five minutes. Let's let's make a method like load or even its constructor. Uh, so I'm going to try and create a constructor that takes a list of a a map of string to we'll call this initial value takes string to expression and if it did this Okay, defaults to empty. Run through uh, initial values. Uh, 
um, run through the initial values and stuff to that. I don't know if I can do that in the initializer. Okay, that should build. And then the interpreter can make use of that. Instead of that, it can just pass it in. Hmm. Hopefully it'll know how to do that. Okay, the uppermost parent is not there. Don't need the init if we do this. And we'll run tests. All right, and we'll just make sure. I think we added times, right? So times of 3, 7 is 21. Yeah. All right, uh, so make symbol table accept a starter list of names. And to do, make REPL work with prefix operators. That is that. Okay, so we've got, um, I guess this is all, I could, should probably call this story prefix operators. Okay, and probably this one is prefix operators. And this one. Okay, now I think the next story is story operators. So this is um, infix operators, three plus four. Okay, we don't handle that yet. <laughs> Goodness, we're getting there. Now, this is actually probably a pretty big story. Um, the parsing and stuff like that is kind of complicated. So we'll we'll see how it goes. But um, and I haven't made some decisions about how to make it work. So we're up for that, too. At any rate, uh, next time is tomorrow morning, 9 to 1130 a.m. Eastern time, Eastern Daylight time. And thanks for joining me today. And I hope you can join me in the future. Bye bye.